So in this video, we're going to talk about stability of microwave amplifiers and specifically stability of the two port networks that characterize them. So if we've got a two port network, and hope you're not getting tired of this drawing by now, characterized by a certain set of S parameters. Let's say we apply a source to it with a certain source impedance. And let's say that we terminate it in a certain load with a certain load impedance. Okay, great. Uh, now we know that this amplifier is characterized by a certain gamma n, or the reflection coefficient, the effective reflection coefficient, after all the reflections back and forth uh, on this output side are taken care of, and those are all transmitted back to the input. So now what happens at the input if we apply, uh, say, a step voltage? So let's uh, Let's say that there's a switch here and we close it at t equals zero. Well, initially on this uh, transmission line, and we're going to neglect the uh, reflection off the transmission line itself, uh, because that's essentially accounted for by using the notation gamma n uh, and gamma s. Uh, so let's say that on this transmission line, initially we've got some value v naught, so we've got a value V naught, and then it gets to the two port network and it gets reflected back uh, with value gamma in. So there's a certain value added uh, to this wave on the transmission line. And uh, just to be clear, this is time, uh, this is voltage along the line, uh, and this is say T equals zero when the when uh, the switch was closed, this is value V naught. So initially it's got a voltage of zero along the line and then at some time T equals zero, it's all of a sudden got a value V naught. Uh, well then some of it gets reflected. And let's say that gamma N is equal to one half. Um, so one half of V naught or one half of the wave that's incoming uh, gets reflected. So we're now up to three halves V naught. And then this additional wave uh, starts traveling back to the source and it gets reflected with value gamma S. And let's assume that gamma S is equal to, also equal to one half. So this wave uh, gets reflected with a value of one half. And so we've got an additional um, one half of one half or one fourth of V naught. So we've got three halves plus one fourth, which is just seven fourths. So then we've got seven fourths V naught. And you can see that this will go on and on and on and on ad infinitum, and eventually will stabilize off at a certain value. Uh, but what if gamma N and gamma S aren't one half? What if they're uh, larger? So Gamma S we know is always going to be a passive load, or typically it's going to be a passive load. So worst case scenario, gamma S is going to be one, absolute worst case scenario in terms of the size of the reflection coefficient. And gamma N, uh, we don't actually know what maximum value it can have because remember it depends on S11, which is generally less than one, but then it also depends off S12, S21, gamma L. And S21 is our forward transducer gain, or the, the amount, the gain that our network has, or that our device has, and that's often much greater than one. So gamma N might very well be larger than one. And let's say that it is. Let's say that gamma N is equal to two. Then what happens? Well, uh, the same exact thing happens as before. We've got a certain voltage wave incoming. It's got a value V naught. But then when it's reflected, uh, it, instead of one half V naught being added, two V naught is added and we go up to three V naught. And then that wave travels back. So this amount travels back and gets reflected by the source. And another three V naught is added by the reflection at the source. And then six V naught is added by a further reflection at the input again. 
and then 6v0, and then 12v0, and you see that eventually it just blows up to infinity. And this is clearly a problem, and so this is an unstable, uh, an unstable system. And indeed, uh, any system that has gamma n greater than 1 is a, or magnitude of gamma n greater than 1, is a potentially unstable system. So it isn't necessarily unstable. It's going to depend on the value of gamma s, because if, say, gamma n is equal to 2, but gamma s is equal to 1 fourth, uh, then gamma s can attenuate the signal faster than gamma n grows it. So in that case, we won't necessarily have instability. And this same exact analysis can be repeated for the output port with gamma out. And we get the same exact condition for gamma out greater than one. And assuming we have a passive load, uh, the system is potentially unstable. And if gamma out is greater than one and the load is, or the reflection coefficient of the load is one, then it's certainly unstable. And in general, gamma in and gamma out aren't necessarily less than one, uh, because we know gamma in is equal to S11 plus that uh, mess. And gamma out is just a very similar thing, S12, S21, except we have gamma S here, one minus S11 gamma S. And so gamma in and gamma out in general don't have to be less than one. And so the conditions that we'll come, we have for stability, uh, so we, we figured out how our system is unstable, but we say that it's stable if we know that the magnitude of gamma in is less than one and the magnitude of gamma out is less than one. This is referred to as an unconditionally stable system. And the reason we say unconditionally is we mean unconditionally for any passive load. So no matter what, uh, what load we have, it's going to have reflection coefficient. So gamma S and gamma L are going to be less than one. So our signal is going to bounce back and forth a bunch of times, but it's going to be attenuated each time, and it's not going to grow to infinity. Uh, so if either one of these conditions is violated, then our amplifier might potentially be, become unstable. And uh, we could evaluate, we could solve for gamma in and gamma out, and we could uh, check to see whether they're each less than one. Uh, but there's a slightly easier way to do this. Uh, and that's with what's called the mu test, uh, or you might have heard of the K delta test. And the mu test uh, was proposed fairly recently. And it's basically, it's you've got a single parameter mu to deal with. Instead of gamma in and gamma out, uh, which have dependencies respectively on gamma L and gamma S and all the S parameters. The mu test is purely, uh, it's one single value. And if mu is greater than one, then your system is stable. If mu is less than one, then your system is potentially unstable. And all the mu test does is it lumps this gamma in and gamma out into a single value. And its derivation is mathematical in nature, but I'm not going to go over it here. I'm just going to give you the, the final result. And the really nice thing about mu is it's only dependent on the S parameters of the network. So you don't have to worry about calculating gamma in, gamma S, gamma L. Um, mu will tell you whether the system is unstable just based on the S parameters. So it's kind of magical in that way. Uh, so mu is just equal to 1 minus the magnitude of S11 squared divided by magnitude of S22 minus delta times S11 conjugate plus magnitude of S12, S21. And this equation, yeah, it's kind of ugly, and it's not immediately obvious uh, what it means or where it comes from. But it's really compact and it's really convenient, and that's why why we like it. And the condition for stability is that this is greater than one, and a larger mu means a more stable device, or you've got more of a margin uh, on the device before it becomes unstable. And delta is just the determinant of the S matrix, which is just equal to uh, S. 1, 1 times S22 minus S12, S21. 
that's just a shorthand notation for it. And it's not, it's not magnitude, um, I should make that clear. Uh, it's the determinant of S and it's a complex valued number. So this is the mu test and it will always work. It's mathematically rigorous. So if you plug in your S parameters and you get a value for mu greater than one, then your system is unconditionally stable. If you get a value from you less than one, your system is potentially unstable. And if it's unconditionally stable, then great, you're done uh, if you want a stable amplifier. But if it's potentially unstable, then you have to do some further analysis. And that analysis I'm going to go over in the next video.